Hello everyone, this is my presentation for Cold Space Rescue U19 about my team. I am the only member and my name is Heng Teng Yi and I'm from Singapore. I've done robotics competitively for about two years and I've taken part in RoboCup 2019 in the RCJ Soccer Lightweight category working on hardware and I've also taken part in iQOO 2020 in the Rescue First Steps U19 category. For Rescue U19, the main objective is to collect six objects, deposit when you have six objects, avoid traps to avoid losing your objects, and avoid leaving the field as there will be a 10 second time penalty. In terms of collection strategy, the main plan is to collect four RRBBCC sets of objects, followed by the four Superplus objects that spawn from them. After that, it will try to collect one more RRBBCC set and the Superplus object that spawns after it, and using the remaining time, it will deposit as many objects of any color as it can. So the reason for this collection uh, order is that uh, if all three colors are available, which they are in the preliminary map, then the, the, easy, the fastest way to get as many points as possible is to collect super plus objects. So if the first four RBBCC sets are cleared with no issues, then the score will be 2.3 to 2.4k. And if the fifth RBBCC set is made with a super plus object, then the score can go up to 2.9 to 3k, which is pretty high. To accomplish the objectives of avoiding traps, walls, and leaving the field, I created an obstacle avoidance algorithm which only uses the position sensor and compass. So by applying thresholding and convolution to a, an image of the map, I can generate 2D arrays which simulate vectors that repel the robot away from danger, such as traps, walls, and the edge of the field. So when traveling towards danger, the vectors corresponding to the robot's position in the, in the array will slow down the robot and push it away. This achieves reliable obstacle avoidance, which only uses the position sensor and compass. Uh, however, as a failsafe, in case it doesn't work, the robot still uses ultrasonic sensors for proportional wall avoidance. Of course, in signal loss zones, there is no position sensor information to avoid traps and swamps. So uh, instead of using the aforementioned uh, obstacle avoidance, what, it does, what the robot does in signal loss zones is run the robot at 80% speed so that it can see the warning in time before running into the traps. And when it sees the warning, it will reverse and rotate out of the way. Uh, and when it's in the swamp, it will run speed at 100%. And of course, to avoid walls, it will turn proportionally when the ultrasonic sensors read low values. Okay, next. To achieve the goal of collecting and depositing objects quickly, I needed to make a point-to-point -point targeting system. The most obvious use case for this would be to target the XY coordinate of the deposit zone uh, once the robot has six objects. So to start, we first calculate the target angle, which is the angle that we want the robot to move forward at in order to reach the target XY coordinate. After getting the target angle, we calculate the angular error of the current compass reading from the target angle. So for example, if the robot was targeting an XY coordinate directly to the left, we will want the compass to read 90 degrees, so the target angle is 90 degrees, while the error is 90 degrees minus the current compass reading. Uh, after this, we adjust the steering rate proportionally to the error, so if the error is very high, we turn a lot. If it's very low, then we turn very little, and this will cause the robot to move forward at the target angle, uh, which will be the most optimal path if not for the fact that there are still obstacles, such as walls and traps, and the edge of the field. So we want the robot not to run into these obstacles. So when the vectors for obstacle avoidance are very high, the steering rate for point-to-point -point targeting is reduced. However, point-to-point -point targeting alone is not enough for the preliminary map. The first issue is that if we want to reach the bonus zone where black objects spawn, it will be faster to go through the swamp than to travel the long empty path. Point-to-point -point targeting the center of the bonus zone does not ensure that it will go, to, go through the swamp. The second issue is that once the robot is in the bonus zone, point-to-point -point targeting cannot be used directly either, since the inverse U-shape of the walls prevent point-to-point -point targeting from working and letting the robot reach the target coordinate. The robot must first leave the bonus zone. The solution to these problems is zone-based pathfinding. So the map is split into 11 zones, 6 of which represent the 4 spawn areas in the map. If the robot is in a zone which spawns a color it needs, it will move randomly, which is to say, it only turns to avoid traps, walls, and obstacles. Uh, this means it does not move in a fixed path, 
so it will cover more ground and collect more objects. If the robot is in a useless zone, which does not spawn on any objects that it needs, it will travel a fixed path through the zones until it reaches a useful zone. So uh, it will target zones in order of black, red, and cyan. And the reason for this is that uh, we really don't want the last, the sixth object that the robot finds to complete the RRBB set to be a black object. Since uh, once it completes the set, it will have to travel a very long path through the swamp in order to reach a deposit zone. And as for red, red is close to a deposit zone, but the spawn area for red is also very big, so it could still end up being very far from the deposit zone. Hence, it targets cyan last, since cyan is closest to the deposit zone, uh, so it will be able to deposit immediately once it completes the RBBCC set. Uh, once it has six objects, it will target the closest deposit zone and deposit there. So here we can see that if the robot was targeting the top deposit zone from the bonus black area, the zone-based pathfinding would force it to exit the bonus zone and go past the swamp and enter the top right corner of the map before proceeding to enter the deposit area. So this will prevent it from being caught on the U-shaped wall as well as the trap uh, in the top middle. If the robot is targeting the bonus zone from the start area, it will first try to enter the middle, the middle square, which is right above the swamp land. And once it's in the middle square, it will immediately go downwards into the swamp. So this ensures that it will take the most optimal path to uh, entering the bonus zone, which is more efficient and reduces time wasted. So that is all for my strategy. In terms of implementation, I did the vector maps in Python and OpenCV, since I find it easier that way to uh, manipulate and analyze images. As for the rest of the code, it was programmed in C and compiled into the DLL file. In terms of problems I had to debug, the first was that in the newest version of the sim, uh, a red, blue, and cyan object with a superplus object being deposited would no longer spawn new superplus objects. In addition, I also realized uh, later on that there could only be four superplus objects in the map at once, so I had to adjust my strategy to aim for four RRBBCC deposits and then collect all the superplus objects followed by another RRBBCC deposit instead of doing five at once. Another problem I faced was that uh, unlike the IQ practice map, point-to-point -point targeting alone was not sufficient to travel easily across the map uh, due to the issues mentioned earlier. So I had to uh, quickly add zone-based pathfinding to my algorithm for it to function properly. To test the math logic in my functions, since it is quite easy to make mistakes uh, in the calculation of angles and such, uh, using Replit was useful to debug and test my functions. In general, debugging uh, often involved rewriting functions to make them more clear and removing unnecessary parts of the code, which uh, clutter it and make it more confusing. For learning experience, I learned how to optimize my Python code to prevent map generation from taking too long. So at the start, it took nearly 20 minutes, which, was, which is a lot of time to generate the vector maps. I also learned how to program with more complex obstacles, such as swamps, uh, signal loss zones, and having more walls than usual. So these are problems that I didn't face in the first steps category. I would like to thank my fellow schoolmates who worked on this challenge alongside me, as well as my teachers in charge and my coach Kenneth for guiding us. In terms of future work, I would like to uh, work on having more randomized movement within a spawn zone to maximize object collection. I would like to make the zone-based pathfinding more modular and easy to modify to fit other maps, since right now it is in a state where it is quite specific to the preliminary map. In signal loss zones, I could try to calculate the position of the robot based on the last known coordinate as well as the robot's orientation and velocity, so you still have a rough position of where the robot is. And one last issue I faced was that a uh, super plus object collection would occasionally not work and collect a nearby normal object instead. One workaround would be to ensure that color sensors do not see the normal objects when collecting super plus.
Thank you for listening.